Similar to this, but it's about half half the size, and it uh, accommodates water mountain lights. So his trucks, and if we make it over there, I'll definitely show you guys. His trucks are top notch, all done up. So probably get some ideas and some excuses to spend some money on fancying up some of these trucks. The Black Pete's already pretty fancy, but I would like to get a, a, a bracket for that truck. And then also an air cleaner bracket for uh, truck 23. Get some uh, water mountain lights on those, spice them up a little. So that's kind of the plan this morning. I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. We'll see what we can get into. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, we're gonna head over a couple miles here to the builder source and find our Freightliner Cascadia tractor only. I'll show you guys how to hook it up. I see a Freightliner Cascadia by itself inside here, so I think this is going to be our truck. We'll obviously confirm the unit numbers, but I think that's our truck. Uh-oh, it says, do not enter. Gangster mode engaged. All right, A1037, I'm pretty sure that's it. I'll have to confirm. I'm pretty sure that's what I heard when I was dispatched the call. So, that guy right there, I think that's it. A1037, I just wanted to get out of the way of the gate. Let's, uh, let's confirm here. All right, yep, I just confirmed that is our truck, A1037. So let's go back up to it. Looking at it from here, I don't see why we can't rear tow it. I mean, Freightliner Cascadias are pretty straightforward to rear tow. Uh, it's a day cab truck too, which is good. We got no fairings to worry about, so we don't have to worry about that. Thanks for having my back, guys. All right, well, we have a couple options on how to hook this guy up. We could fork this, but my preferred option would be just going to the U-bolts. Should be pretty straightforward. So yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and fold our underlift down. And while that's doing that, I'm gonna take some pictures of the unit. Try to document any type of damage. Doesn't look like there's much though. Just normal wear and tear. So super important when rear towing, make sure the hood is latched. We'll go ahead and fold the mirrors in if we can. Sometimes they're tricky. Okay, mirrors are folded. Check the hood latch over here and we'll fold that here in a second. We'll take one more picture of this side. Now this, that exhaust should block that fairing. I'm just gonna kinda do a little wiggle test here. That should be okay. It's not very windy today. Go ahead and close this guy. Ooh. Oh, that one's solid. Oh, I don't think we're getting that one. Okay. Oh well, this is on the uh, non or the passenger side. So I'm just gonna put the key in here so I don't lose it and forget it in my pocket. Neutral. I wonder if it starts. Let's just find out. Okay, it does run, so that's good to know that we can probably drop it and drive it in. Okay. Not sus at all. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lower the air suspension. Doesn't even look like it has any air pressure anyway, so I'm sure it's down. Yep. Yeah. Just leave that there. All right, 
first order of business, what I like to do is at least get ourselves on the on the U-bolts. Uh, so we'll go ahead and extend out here. Now there are these things called U-bolt cups. Personally, I don't. I mean, I don't mind them, but with these newer trucks, they sit so low that you can't really use them unless you either have these on the low setting or you lift the truck or drive it up on blocks. So I really don't mind hooking them like this, just using the uh, receivers. Some people say that it like wallows out the hole. I've towed hundreds of trucks like this. I've never had that problem. So I'm just gonna run with it. Um, that one needs to come in a little bit. So let's do that. Slide it in. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we're at least under it. Now we need to chain the axle. We can do that. I usually use a 20 foot chain. So I got that. And then I usually grab a pin puller. That way I'm not climbing under the truck. I can do it all from the top side. So the concept here is that we are chaining the axle up so that way when we lift the truck in the air, the uh, axle isn't drooping from the airbag and hyper extending the airbag. So we'll drop this chain and I usually drop it right between the S cam and the axle itself. So that way we're only putting weight on the axle. Set this chain there. And then we'll use my pin puller that I set. This is what I was talking about. Just kind of stick it way back in here and grab the chain. There we go. So bring it up to here. Make sure we're sitting on the right spot. Okay, and then just set that there for now. We'll do the same over here. Pull everything this way. That way it ends up over there. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of pull it tight here and give ourselves a loop. Nothing crazy, it doesn't have to be super tight. Okay, so that looks good. I'm just gonna double check everything, make sure the chains are in the right spots. And now we'll go ahead and lift up and we'll see that, taint, that chain will begin to tighten. So there you go, it's tight. And now the axle is resting on my chain, or the weight of the axle is being held by my chain and not the airbags. So we're chilling there. So brakes are set, but since the drive tires are off the ground and the steer tires are only for service brakes, we can bring it in. Looks like we're gonna have to straighten up that steering wheel a little. Okay, I left myself a little bit of turning clearance there. We're done with this, we can put it away. Okay, axle straps. I'm gonna set this right there for now. I'm gonna do a two for one. Get the other one while I'm up there. So I usually just shimmy myself in between up here. Seems to be the easiest way. And then we'll take our axle strap and put it between the brake system and the axle kind of just leave it hanging so it's ready for us same on this side this side's a little bit easier there's a little less since the pumpkin on the differential isn't on this side there's a little bit more real estate to work with so make sure your strap is nice and straight right over the top so reach back there grab that slack end and we'll feed it right through, pull. Okay, so that's secured. I'm actually gonna take this up to 
the height that I want it, put a little tilt in it. Okay, something like that should work out decent. And the reason I did that is because I wanna put my safety chains in while I'm on this side. I go right over this cross member. Now remember, safety chains aren't designed to be under tension unless you have a catastrophic failure, so. That's plenty of turning clearance. We'll be A-OK -okay doing that. Just checking my camera angle here. Okay. Uh, let's hop over to the other side and do the same thing. Sweet. Okay. We are done with the remote. I'll set it there. Two more guesses or two more things we need to do. Any guesses? This is one of them. Okay, light bar. This is wireless, battery operated. On these freight liners, this is my method. I go through the center, go corner, corner, turn it on, and then I usually do a cross. So I go cross, cross. Give it a little wiggle. Looks good to me. I'm gonna give this one more go. Nope. Now. Okay, steering wheel. My wife is calling me. Okay, next step here, we're gonna go with some straps. All right, the trucks are a little, a little messy from all the rain work we've been doing. Rain the past couple days, so we had a lot of accidents. I mean, they're not that bad, really, but. They aren't perfect either. I'm gonna start the truck up just so we got power steering. That looks pretty straight there. I'm just gonna assume it's straight. If we have a little dog leg, that's okay. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll take the strap up, make a little lasso. Let's see what's under here. Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind. We're gonna have to go to the uh, brake pedal, it, it appears. Let's see if we can go, let's see what's on this side. I guess we can do that. We'll go to the, the seat, the seat belt mount. You know what though, that moves with the seat, so we're not gonna wanna do that either. Okay, we're gonna have to go to the brake pedal. We can actually go to the clutch here and the brake on the other. <sighs> Man, it's hard to work when your phone rings all the time. Hey, what's happening? seatbelt as a safety. All right, I think we're good there, guys. Might lower it down a little bit. It seems a little high. Okay, all right. Flip our camera on, turn our control or our PTO off. Let's get ourselves turned around here. Pull out into the uh, open here or outside of this slot, and I'll uh, set a camera up as a time lapse. All right, well, like I said, we got about a 90 mile drive. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I think I'm going to set up a camera somewhere for you guys, a little time lapse action. Um, looks like this door's open. There it goes. I saw the little light on up there. All right, yeah, I'll set up a camera for you guys and we'll go get on with it. All right, we're on 
on the freeway now, guys. This thing, I can already tell, I didn't think it'd be that bad because it didn't have big bearings, but it has that big bubble dome on the top. It's like a parachute. Probably gonna get like a mile to the gallon. This is why I love this area. So that right there is Mount San Jacinto. There's a tramway that goes all the way to the, well, not the very top, but a tramway that goes up there. Uh, that peak is just under 11,000 feet. And we're sitting at like sea level here. And then you got, um, I don't know the exact name of the mountain, but you got like the town of Big Bear up there, uh, mountain city with ski slopes and all that. So we just had rain yesterday so all the mountains got dusted it's uh 60 degrees right now 60 and sunny can't beat it, it is, this is awesome we uh, definitely take this for granted so awesome area if you've ever considered moving here all right we're uh, off the freeway here we just got off cherry avenue in fontana we're gonna pull up to freightliner and see what it's all about Freightliner can be like super hit or miss. We could either be waiting there for like an hour and a half or we could pull up and drop really quick. So we'll see. Considering this thing runs, I'm probably gonna pull up to the, the to the line and just start dropping it. And I'm just gonna pull it into the bay and hopefully one of the guys just says, oh, you're good, leave the keys in it. We'll see. All right, let's see what we're dealing with here. This is the Freightliner dealer. Uh, no tow truck, so that's a good sign. A lot of times there's a line of tow trucks, but there's not at the moment. This guy's backing up. Probably gonna sit myself right here for a second. Let this guy do whatever he's trying to do. Wow, the dealer's actually super empty right now. Like, I'm looking in the back lot back there. There's a lot of room. This place is usually jam-packed. Like, to the point where you they don't even accept trailers here. They used to back in the day, but now they don't because they just they just can't get it in here. But yeah, I don't I don't see. Oh, oh man, big bump! I'm gonna pull this thing up here, and I'm just gonna start dropping. Jeez, that truck is like blindside backing out onto the street. That sucks. All right, PTO, control power. Ba bang let's, let's dump this thing off. Chain's done. Got the strap. Pull these off. That over there so no one hurts themselves. Okay. Pop this strap off.
Okay, done there. pressure built building here as it doesn't start now U-turn out here, and then we'll pull it in the lineup and tell them to have fun with the truck. All right, I'm gonna drop the camera here for a second, guys. Talk to the guys here. All right, we just dropped here at Freightliner, as you guys saw, no biggie. I just went in the service desk and told them, "There's your truck," and they asked who it was for. Told them who it was, and they were like, "All right, you're good to go." So we're good. That was probably the quickest in and out experience I've ever had at Freightliner. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead just down the street here about 30 minutes into Riverside to go check out like I was telling you guys Platinum Enterprises to go stop by their yard see what kind of goodies we can find and show you guys some pretty trucks All right, we're back to the yard. Sorry. No pretty trucks um, It was kind of a rush job had to get in and out real quick So I didn't get to get any video of the trucks, but definitely overlay some pictures um, Sophie can ask me for those and I can get some pictures but uh, Platinum Enterprises and Plaza Towing, we both uh, what we call subhaul with each other. So if there's a job that we're too busy to handle or likewise, if there's a job that they're too busy to handle or if we need extra trucks on a job and if they need extra trucks on a job, we help each other out. So it's a very good working relationship. Uh, we're back here to the yard. Um, just some things that are going on. This uh, XPO truck and trailer those rolled over yesterday. I wasn't able to videotape those because I wasn't confident in my microphone setup in the pouring rain that we were working in. I just thought um, that it would destroy this very expensive setup. So we decided not to videotape that and it just wouldn't have been fun to wear a camera uh, during that. And I don't think the video would have turned out very good either. Uh, but yeah, that was a rollover that we did yesterday, both truck and trailer and the second trailer all rolled over. Um, onto a car actually, which would have been a really good video, unfortunately. But uh, they just left right now because I think it was that trailer. Um, the whole, yeah, it is this trailer. The whole other side is like blown out. Uh, it rolled over on the guardrail and like skated across the guardrail. So it was, uh, we actually brought it up loaded, uh, but it was, uh, it was a little tricky. I think we lost a, in total, it was loaded with like olive, cans of olives. We lost like five cans, which is pretty impressive considering the giant hole that's in the side of that. We made it happen, so they just came by and offloaded both the trailers, and then I believe tomorrow those need to get towed up to Fontana to their terminal. Um, let's show you guys what I bought, how about that? So, I told you guys I was just gonna buy some air cleaner light brackets, I think I told you that. Well, Victor showed me everything that they had, and oh, here, there's a good calendar. I got a calendar, so. This is their, their trucks and the caliber of their equipment, really. Really impressive stuff, so awesome. Anyway, um, I got myself a visor. So I don't know what truck I'm gonna put that on, but it was a drop visor. Might go on the rotator, might go on truck 23. But these are the brackets I got. As you can see, they're ready to go for three watermelon lights. So those won't, won't be on this truck, but they do something, some, something like that. So. Those will look good, and they'll look really good with the watermelon lights that I'm going to buy. So I'm going to fuel this truck up, and then uh, we'll see what else the day has for us. Probably going to eat lunch. First order of business. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be a wrap for the day. I just got done with a winch out on a box truck. I can probably put some pictures of it uh, here, but I couldn't record just because it's one of our good accounts, but I'll try to get a picture that doesn't show who it was. But yeah, that's, that's it for the day. Uh, we'll see what else happens tonight. I just had Jonathan go pick up a generator that's going to Calipatria for the morning. So he's gonna pick up that, preload it, and be ready for the morning. 
Um, like I said earlier, we got to tow that XPO stuff out. Open the gate, please open the gate. So yeah, that'll be another day, another video. So I appreciate you guys watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the video. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.